Welcome back to the Goldmark Gallery and to our brand new Christopher P. Wood exhibition. This is quite a special event because as well as the beautiful landscapes that we've got on these walls, some paintings that you might not have seen before, some early works, some from the last few weeks, we've also got a fantastic book to launch. This is a sort of brand new overview of Christopher's work. It's got a fantastic introduction by Dr. Richard Davey and it delves into not just some of the interests that Chris has, the mysterious things that he's pulling on in his paintings, but also the extraordinary range of his work. Here's a little preview of Richard Davey reading from this brand new book. Lying awake in the dark, hiding on the duvet, the child hears a creak and shivers with fear. Plucking up courage, they peer out from under the bed covers to see mysterious forms dance across the wall. Are those the shadows of a monster? Perhaps they belong to a burglar, or maybe the bogeyman. In the dim half-light, looking through half-closed eyes, their imagination plays games, turning tree branches into unknown prowling creatures and creaking floorboards into frightening footsteps. Adults have learnt that these nighttime monsters are nothing more than products of the imagination. That a branch is a branch and a creak is a creak. But for a child, the world is still mysterious and strange. What will quickly become ordinary is still extraordinary. Not yet knowing the name of things, they look with wonder. Seeing the world through innocent eyes, constantly asking, What's that? In this moment of wonder, between the question and the answer, there is a playful space filled with limitless potential, where imagined worlds can be conjured into being, and things an adult knows to be impossible remain possible. Castles emerge in the clouds. A man can be seen in the craters of a moon, which is made of cheese. A stick becomes a sword. A broom becomes a horse, fingers become pistols, arms become the wings of an aeroplane. A branch becomes a monster, and a hand transforms into the shadow of a rabbit's head on a wall. Christopher P. Wood is fascinated by this space of wonder, with its fluid forms and playful experiences. He looks at the world through innocent eyes, alert to the presence of mystery. So copies of the book will be available at the gallery. Make sure you come and pick up yours. This exhibition of landscapes will be ongoing for four, six weeks. So do please come and uh, take a look. It's a fantastic overview of Chris's work. We've got paintings made in the last few months, like this one behind me, and some 20 years before, like this beautiful river setting behind me here. It also gives you a great introduction to Chris's work if you've not seen some of his, his, his paintings, his prints before. Um, there's a beautiful calmness to some of these paintings on the wall, a real variety of landscape settings, and it's really fascinating to see how he tackles landscapes of his imagination from different mediums, whether it's oils on canvas to some of the uh, fantastic uh, colourful collages that we've got upstairs. Here's Dr Richard Davy again talking about what it is in these landscapes that really interests him. These three works capture so much of what I love about um, Chris's work. Starting with this large painting, Temple, immediately it, it draws you in into this landscape which seems to hover between something solid and something where you can, like, mist reach in and, and know you're never going to be able to touch it because it has no, no substance. You're drawn by the sky and then you suddenly see this tiny little star and then more stars. And so it's a blue sky and yet it's night as well in this kind of borderland between what is real and isn't real, what is possible and isn't possible. And then you come down into the landscape and on one level, it's as though you are um, in that incredible journey where you've been shrunk to the size of, of an ant and you're going through the undergrowth and 
are these tiny little flowers which seem like trees. And then you realise you're the giant and this tiny bird in the foreground and this castle which you're looking down on. But a castle should be huge and yet here it's shrunk, it has that medieval quality of playing with space and, and the unity of things and how things work. And you look inside, you're drawn into the window, but then you can see inside and there's nothing there. That sense of mystery within the castle. And the snake, and in the essay I talked about seeing snakes in the undergrowth and, and here's a snake heading towards the trees where it can get lost in the roots. And everything feels both solid and yet insubstantial. This tree, is it a tree or is it just a smudge of paint swirled with a brush? And how big is that tree? You know, is it a tree which is the size of this castle, a huge ancient oak, or is it just the boundary of this river and is it a tree? Is it just grass? Is it reeds? Is it... And that's what excites me. And the ladder, an ancient kind of wooden gardening ladder with the rungs heading up, Jacob's ladder-like, into the heavens, but it doesn't get there. There's no heavens to reach, it still stops short. But you also have the rainbow, the, the symbol um, of promise and hope darting there. But instead of it being up in the sky, it's down on the earth. And that rainbow goes throughout, the colouring goes throughout, and it just spreads across here, and you see the reds and the yellows and the blues and the indigos all there in this space. And then here in this painting, Hidden World, just invites you into a different form of landscape, a kind of English pastoral Albion. And what's really fascinating here is, again, this space between reality and unreality, between you know, the possible and impossible. So in this area, you have trees which are oak trees or elms. They look like real trees. And here's the same. But then you realize they're brush marks. But then, are these trees or are these brush marks or are these plants? They weave in and, each, in and out of each other. And they break down and create this fantastical landscape. And again, the bird is here in these strange um, structures with markings, hieroglyphics, which remind me of Alan Davy's work, and Alan Davy was really important. Um, not so much influence, but somebody that Chris often has a conversation with, and Alan Davy often has these symbols which intrigue, and we know that they, there is no meaning behind them other than the meaning is wonder and mystery and hidden knowledge. And then we come back to this painting here, Ice Age One. And the bird, we've got the bird in all three of these paintings, you know, like a familiar, like a, a kind of constant companion. And what I love in this is, this is much more brushy, and these brush marks, you can see the kind of twiddling with the, with the brush, pushing and pulling and turning. And out of those physical marks of Chris's arm and hand, the big strokes like this, a landscape emerges. And it's that sense of seeing castles in the clouds and seeing the possibility of substance in smoke and mist. And then as you walk through it, as you get closer, you realize it's just a brush mark, that the trees and the hills are just brush marks, the movement of the artist's hand across the surface. And that is what art is. It's this conjuring up of new worlds out of nothingness through the movement of a hand across a surface, drawing pigment, earth, into sky.
I hope this teaser for the show, for the book, has piqued your curiosity. Do come and take a look at the show. It's on for uh, the next four or six weeks. It's really, when you get up and close with Chris's work, it's fantastic to be able to see the brush strokes, the way that he's been working in this wet-on-wet -wet technique uh, in some of these paintings. It's a fantastic show. It'll be ongoing. I look forward to seeing some of you here. <laughs>